Church of Christ and uh, welcome uh, to those who are joining us for the first time for our Wednesday Bible study. Today we are going to talk about exciting things and, and not only exciting things but things that can help us as God's people during uh, this difficult time that we find ourselves in. But before we, 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 we get to those things I would like us to to pray as we as we are about to start let's pray together our father who art in heaven we thank you lord for for this for this day we thank you father for for your church which is the pillar and the foundation of the truth father we thank you also for the privilege that we have as your people to open your word and and open the very mouth of our god so that we can hear from you our Lord, your people need answers from you and your people, Father God, need tools and uh, things that they can use, Father God, to respond to this difficult time. And Father, we know, Father God, that your word is powerful. We know that your word is able to equip us to be able to face each and every kind of situation that we find ourselves in. Our Father, we pray that at this time we may open our hearts and open our minds so that your word might dwell in our hearts richly and germinate and manifest in our, in our thoughts and in our perspectives and our, our actions, Lord. Our Father, I pray for, for the, so many of our members, Father, who are going through trying times at this point in time. Our Father, mindful of those who, who are suffering from all kinds of anxieties, Lord as a result of the uncertainties that they find themselves in. Our Father, amongst us, we have businessmen and women, Father God, whose businesses have been affected by COVID-19. Our Father, I pray for them. I pray that you may continue, Father God, to, to, to make it known to them what they need to do next, Lord. I pray also for those who are ordinary employ employees, Father, who who are also facing uncertainties during this time. I pray that you may add a special blessing to them, Father, so that they may realize, Lord, that in you we have a comforter and in you, Father God, we have a God who is able, Lord, to lead and guide us. Father, mindful of our those who are in authorities, those, of, uh, those that we know, Father God, who are leading this uh, 
this church to lead our nation during this difficult time. Father, I pray for them. I pray for the president. I pray for the council. I pray for, for frontline workers, Father. I pray for, for those in the healthcare sector, Father, who, who are in the front line of this, this pandemic, Father, trying to help our nation, Father. May you add a special blessing to them as well so that, Father God, they might be able, Lord, to respond adequately to this, to this pandemic. Father, we thank you for Hilltop Church of Christ. It's such a blessing to be part of this church. It's a privilege, Father, for us to be members of your church universally. I pray for your church of Christ in, 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 in South Africa and in the world, Lord, during this time, that you help us to stay close to your oracles, help us to stay close to your word, so that we might be able, Lord, to, to be able to respond like we should as citizens of heaven, as citizens of eternity, as citizens, Father, uh, of, not, of, 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 of heaven during this, this particular time. We thank you and we ask you to bless our time this evening. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Our focus this evening will be Philippians chapter 4, uh, starting from verse 2. Uh, we thank Brother Chris for the amazing job he did with Philippians chapter 3. Uh, but we are going to take it from Philippians chapter 4, uh, from verse 2 until uh, verse 9. And, and it reads as follows. I urge you, dear, and I urge Sinteke to live in harmony in the Lord. Indeed, true companion, I ask you also to help these women who have shared my struggles in the cause of the gospel together with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is no honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Here in, 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 in the book of Philippians chapter 4, starting from verse 2, we, we are introduced to an unusual scenario here. Here Paul is exhorting brethren in Philippi uh, to, to actually encourage two sisters who, whom he has worked with in the past to, to live in harmony with, with one another. You, you can imagine uh, this, this letter being, being read with your name. If you were Sintika or if you were Yudia, you can imagine uh, brethren opening the letter and you find your name there. And, and, and it's not a complimentary thing, but you find your name uh, uh, in the letter. And, and, and what is the purpose of the letter? To encourage you and your fellow sister, you dear, to live in harmony in the Lord. And, and brethren, we, we are not told, there are certain things that we are not told in this passage. The, the first thing that we are not told is what was the nature of the conflict or the disagreement that these two women had. The Bible does not tell us what, what is the bone of contention. What is it that caused these women to, 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 to have this disagreement? Another thing that the Bible does not tell us is how they dealt with these disagreements. Uh, uh, the steps that they have taken in order to resolve 
these disagreements. We are just told by the Apostle Paul in verse 2 that these women who are Judea and Sintica were not living in harmony with one another. And the Apostle Paul edges these women. I, I like his approach. He, he does not compel these women to live in harmony, but he pleads with these women to live in harmony with, with one another with one another. Even though we are not told uh, uh, the steps that they have taken, I, I want us to look closely uh, into this letter in order to see how we can resolve conflicts once they are there. You see, another author by the name of Sonia Bendix in Industrial Relations will tell you that where two or three people are, there is always a potential for conflict. So conflict, uh, brethren, is something that is a normal part of, of our lives as human beings. Uh, it, it's so normal that even young children, even if you leave them alone for 30 minutes, you might come back to, 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 to a conflict situation. So that's the first thing I want to say this evening to, to all of us who are in the Church of Christ and to those of us who are, who, are, who are visiting us for the first time who are not members of the Church. A conflict is a normal part of our existence. There is nothing abnormal about disagreements. As human beings, we are bound to disagree with, with one another. That is the first point I want to make uh, in, 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 this, in this study. The second point that I want to make about conflict is that conflict cannot be completely eradicated. All we can do is to manage it. As God's people, we, we are encouraged at all times to manage whatever conflict situation that we find ourselves in. And the third thing that I want to say uh, this, this evening is that even the most spiritual of people experience conflict or they uh, sometimes have conflict. Conflict does not only happen uh, between carnal people. You know, sometimes as God's people, when we look at uh, people having disagreements, we're thinking it only happens because they are carnal. It, it only happens because they are not spiritual. But, but here we see two spiritual women experiencing conflict or in a conflict situation. You would remember even the Apostle Paul himself had conflict or sharp disagreements with Barnabas over John Mark. So, so, so the second thing I want, the third thing I want to settle about conflict, because there's a lot of things that people say about conflict. The third thing I want to settle about conflict and get it out of the way is that even some of the most spiritual people can find themselves having disagreements. And sometimes they become sharp disagreements like the one that the Apostle Paul and Barnabas had. So what have I said this, this evening? The first thing I've said is that conflict where two or three individuals are, there's always a potential for conflict. Even you there at home, I, I saw Commission for Gender Equality telling us that there's a lot of there's a lot of potential for conflicts during the lockdown. Maybe be because we are in each other's faces, there's always a potential for conflict, and more so now than ever. So that's the first thing I said. The second thing that I said this evening is that. Uh, even the most spiritual people experience disagreements. Just because you see two brothers uh, experiencing disagreements, it doesn't mean that they are carnal. It doesn't mean that they are not spiritual. Even the most spiritual people like Paul and Barnabas experienced conflict. Actually, I like the words that the Apostle Paul is going to use uh, when he refers to this woman, just because he understand that even the most spiritual people experience conflict. Listen to what he says about this woman. He doesn't say, you carnal people, you know, help these carnal people to overcome their differences. But listen to what he says. He is even going to an extent of saying these women's names 
are written in the book of life. Just because they are experiencing some disagreements, it doesn't mean that they are not spiritual. They are so spiritual that the Apostle Paul says that their names are written in, in the book of life. So it is not whether or not we, 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 we are supposed to have conflicts or not. It is a, just a question of when you have conflicts. You will have conflicts. I will have conflicts. We are bound as God's people to be in a conflict situation. So it, it's not a question of saying we will not experience conflict. I think it's a question of how we can manage conflict as and when it arises. And, and I, I'm looking at this passage, brethren, and I want to take it slowly this evening. I don't want to hurry into anything. I want us to take it step by step and look at how the Apostle Paul was able to help these two women who were in a conflict situation. The first thing that we see him doing is to write to the church about their conflict. And he does not even hide their names. In this letter that he has penned, he even writes their names so that as brethren read the letter, they might see uh, who is in a conflict situation. So that's the first thing that we see the Apostle Paul doing. He writes the letter to the church. In other words, he escalates this matter to the level of the church. But why does the Apostle Paul do that? Is it possible that the reason why the Apostle Paul is doing that is because these women are not able to solve their own problem or their own disagreements? I don't know. Maybe there at home you might have, have an insight. But as I mentioned earlier, there is nothing in this letter that suggests and that gives uh, or informs us of the steps that these two women uh, took in order to resolve their conflict. As God's people, we know steps of resolving conflict. Some of us know Matthew chapter 18 from verse 15 and following on how uh, we should resolve our disagreements. There in Matthew 18 verse 15 and following, we are told that if uh, your brother sins against you, the first thing that you need to do is not to take it to the church, is not to call other people, but the first thing that you need to do when you have a disagreement with your brother or your sister is to go and show him their fault. That's the first thing. You don't gossip about them. You don't tell the whole world about them, but you go to them. That is the, the, the first thing that you do when you have a conflict. And if he does not listen, if they do not listen, you go to step number two. And step number two is to, is to go and take two or three witnesses because we know that Based on two or three witnesses, a matter can be settled. And if they still do not listen, you involve the church. And involving the church might mean you, you talk to the leadership uh, or you talk to, to, to spiritual people in the church uh, who, who will be able to mediate and help you with your conflict. As God's people, we need to always avoid you know, taking our disagreements outside the church to the courts, to, to all kinds of, of forums. We need to resolve our differences internally in the church. Uh, First Corinthians uh, chapter 6 is there to remind us that is there no one spiritual or wise enough among you to help you when you experience difficulties. But of course, there are some issues that you cannot resolve only internally. There are matters of the law and those are different issues. Those are not the issues that I'm talking about. I'm talking about if brothers and sisters have disagreements that we can we can resolve as God's people. So that is the normal step. That is the normal way of resolving our conflicts. But here we see a different way altogether. Here we see the Apostle Paul, he, he does not say they must talk to one another and find each other, but the Apostle Paul starts by involving the church. My assumption is that maybe he, this Two sisters had already exhausted other uh, the Matthew 18 uh, a way of resolving. Maybe they had tried to resolve this thing 
on their own and they failed. Maybe they, they, they took or roped other brethren with them so that they can help them to resolve this conflict and they have, might have failed. Maybe it, it, this conflict is at a level where you can no longer treat it as a private thing, but you can now only treat it as a, as a public thing. And, and this is exactly what I want to say from the onset. Once an issue becomes public, it needs to be resolved publicly. It is no longer a private matter. Once it is known by the church, probably that their the conflict and their disagreement what was now known to the whole church. It was an open secret. Everybody knew that Judea and Sintica were, were not living harmoniously with each other. And once it reaches that stage, you cannot treat it privately. You cannot take them and say, let's go and resolve this issue privately. And no wonder the Apostle Paul uh, takes the, the step that he has taken. Be, be, because if you try to resolve it privately, you might lose those who have been exposed to this conflict. They might not know the resolution. They might not know how you resolved this conflict. So, so public issues are dealt with publicly. And, and I'll tell you why. I, I'm, 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 I'm of the view that maybe their conflict, this women's conflict, had begun to affect the church. We, we know that sometimes these conflicts start at a private level, but later on they, they, they end up affecting the unity of the church. Because what do people do when they have disagreements? Usually people will go and converse other people to support them, and even the other one will go and converse other people to support them and what ends up happening is that the whole church is divided. So the first thing that we're learning from his approach is that once a situation begins to affect the church, is known by the whole church, it needs to be escalated uh, to the church level. It can no longer be treated as a private issue. We, we, have, we have been making a mistake in our congregations. We would be knowing that Sister So-and-so and Sister So-and-so do not, do not see uh, eye to eye. And, and they have actually even robed other sisters with them uh, in order to get sympathy for them. And it's beginning to divide the church. And it's not only with the sisters, but we have known in the Church of Christ some of the big conflicts. Some of these conflicts are family conflicts, and then they escalate into the church, and then they begin to divide the church. And some people will say, I'm off Justice. Another person will say, I'm off Chris. And then it causes a division. Once issues get to that level, brethren, we can no longer treat them privately. We can no longer say, no, this is none of our business. You know, it's a private matter between two families. It's a private matter between two brothers. It's a private matter between two sisters. Once it begins to affect the church, once they begin to converse other members of the church to support them, you can no longer treat it as a private matter. And my suspicion is that it was beginning to affect the church. No wonder the, the Apostle Paul is, is escalating the matter. So that's the first way of dealing with conflicts that have become public. You escalate them to the church. But why do you escalate them to the level of the church? You escalate them to the level of the church because they are affecting the entire congregation. Number two, you escalate it to the church level because you want to help them. You want to put these two people under pressure so that they can begin to deal with their uh, source of disagreement. Uh, sometimes uh, we need to put people in, in that space where the whole church will hold them accountable. The whole church will know that they are in a process of resolving their conflict. I like what Brother Vela Mabuza once said about Philemon and Onesimus. Uh, 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 Brother Vela Mabuza says, you know, that the situation was such that Paul had to involve the whole church and put them in a boxing ring, not so that they can box each other but put them in a boxing ring so that they can 
uh, experience the spotlight of the church. Sometimes, brethren, we bury our heads in the sand as members of the church, even though we know that these two brothers or these two sisters don't see eye to eye and it affects the church, we do not bring a spotlight. Sometimes we need to bring a spotlight on these two. And we see Paul uh, uh, bringing the spotlight to these two brethren and, and adding a bit of pressure, you know, so that they can be able to solve the, their issue. And, and, and the second thing that we see here is that the Apostle Paul is also appealing, which is, which is the second thing that I want to say uh, we can use in order to solve conflicts. Number one, we escalate them to the level of the church if it has become public. Number two, we use persuasion. We, 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 we don't use force. The Apostle Paul is urging these women. The Apostle Paul is, is, is pleading with these women. The Apostle Paul is still calling these women with terms of endearment. L listen to what the Apostle Paul is saying about these women. He's saying they are his fellow workers. He, he does not use an expert approach. You know, sometimes when we mediate, uh, in conflict situations, we, 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 we come in with an expert approach and, 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 and treating people as though they are your subordinates and, 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 and that they should be compelled to listen to you. But look at what the Apostle Paul is doing. He's saying, help these women. They are my fellow workers. He, he uses the word yoke fellows. He, he uses the word uh, uh, partners. He's, he's not putting himself as an expert who needs to be listened to. But what does the Apostle Paul say? He says, help these women. They are my yoke fellows. And, and in most cases, sometimes I get an opportunity uh, to resolve conflicts between sisters and, and, and sometimes as men, we, we use an expert approach. We get into that conflict situation and we want women to listen to us because we are the men. And the Apostle Paul does not use that. He does not use his masculinity in order to oppress these women. Instead, he says to these women, these women are my yoke fellows. They are my partner in the Lord. And, 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 and there are implications uh, 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 for this, for these statements that the Apostle Paul is, is using. I think the first implication is that the Apostle Paul sees these women as his equals, as his partners in the cause of the gospel. Of course, we know that in the church set up, when we are gathered together, the Bible advises for male spiritual leadership. Yes, men uh, occupy that leadership role. It's a role. It's not a place of seniority or, or, or power, but it's a role. It's male spiritual leadership. But when it comes to the preaching of the gospel, when it comes to um, the, the evangelism, men and women work together in the course of the gospel. No wonder at Hilltop our theme for this year and last year was men and women working together in the course of the gospel. I think as brothers, we can learn a lot from the way the Apostle Paul is approaching this subject. He's not approaching this subject from a paternalistic uh, point of view, that I'm an older parent. You should listen to me, but he is pleading with them. I urge you, dear, and Sintika, who are my young fellows. And actually, the Apostle Paul is even calling a, an individual that he calls his young fellow. He says, young fellow, help these women. Help these women. Which is the third point that I want to, I, I want to push this evening. How we, we resolve conflicts, although we escalate them to the level of the church, but the aim is not to embarrass people when we bring the conflict or their disagreement to the church. The aim is to help brethren. I like the word that he uses uh, for help here. It has the idea of taking hold of, of somebody. It has the idea of, of, of taking hold of together. Actually, the word that he uses for help this woman is silambano. You know, uh, it comes from the word lambano, meaning to, uh, 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 to take, you know. And so he says, take 
hold together with these women. In other words, take them along. They are, they are remaining behind. Take these women along with you. In other words, you, you must not impose on these women, but you must take them along. You must convince them. You must persuade these women who are my yoke fellows, whose names are also written in the book of life. This is the point of, of helping these women. The point is to help them in such a way that you remember that they are your fellow heirs, that they are you, you know, um, joined heirs with you. They are not inferior to you, but they are your fellow workers. So he's urging uh, the church there to, to take hold of them. Let, let, let them not be left behind. Because one thing that, that, that conflict does, church, it is, is it, will, it will delay you. It, it, will, it will delay you from forming uh, intimate and important relationships in the church. And so the Apostle Paul is saying, take them along. That is the third thing that we are learning this evening. The first thing that we are learning escalated to the level of the church if it is public, if it is well known, so that you put these individuals in the spotlight and you give them, you apply some pressure so that they can solve their conflict. Because if you don't do that, it will divide the church. And the next thing, you wake up to a divided church. So let us not leave matters hanging in our congregations. Let us not say this is a private thing between private individuals. If it has begun to affect the church and they have also conversed people, you need to escalate it to the level of the church. The second thing, don't use an expert approach. Be like the Apostle Paul who, who sees himself as an equal to these women. Instead, he is urging, he is pleading with them to resolve they are country because these are matured individuals. These are spiritual people. We are not talking about carnal people. We are not talking about people who do not know the Lord. These are women who worked with Paul side by side in the cause of the gospel. They are his yoke fellows. You know, the word a uh, yoke fellow is suzukos. You know, this is from the word yoke. You know, uh, you know how animals would put a a, 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 a bar on their necks so that they can plow together. He says, I've been plowing together with these women in the course of the gospel. Urge, brethren, to resolve their differences. Do not impose your masculinity. Do not impose your seniority. The Apostle Paul does nothing of a sort. If you read the book of Philemon, the Apostle Paul is using the same strategy. He is not instructing them. To, to fix their disagreements. Even though he says, I have every reason to instruct you, Philemon, to resolve whatever issue you have with your slave, Onesimus. But I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use, because you owe me your very life, but I'm not going to take advantage of that. Instead, what he does is to use persuasion. Brethren, we need wisdom when it comes to issues of conflict. When it comes to conflict, you cannot afford to, to, to be foolish. We need to be wise when we approach issues of conflict. And, and another thing that we are learning is, is, is that women and men are partners in the church. Women and men are, are yoke fellows in the church, especially when it comes to the preaching of the gospel. And, and, and the Apostle Paul is saying, these women are, are, are my yoke fellows. Help them so that they can uh, resolve their, their differences. I like what he says in verse 5. In verse 5, he says there is a reason why he wants these women to resolve their differences. Look at what the reason is. He says, for the Lord is near. The Lord is near. You, you see, I like what another man said about, about this statement. Listen to what he says about this statement. The Lord is near. He says, some things appear trivial when seen from the perspective of the Lord's second coming. In, in other words, this man is saying, even our bickering, even our conflicts seem trivial seem petty, seem small when seen from the perspective of the Lord's 
coming. Brethren, we are going to spend eternity